feel that you failed at something mm-hmm. and and you admit it to your team, it starts to lose power. Yeah. And and so we I don't even I I, I have a complicated relationship with the failure word because it got too popular mm-hmm. and I don't think of it as so much failure, but it's like events. Unpleasant events mm-hmm. happen every day. Yeah. And I try to just get them out. Mm-hmm. And I try to push them out. So I'll use email. I'll use the, our, our public forums just to make sure that if something felt especially unpleasant and if I can feel shame around it, mm-hmm. that's the stuff that I most want to share with everybody yeah. to de- depower it for yeah. not just myself because as an organization, you mm-hmm. know, you just might feel really bad about this thing that just yeah. went down. And so I have you done uh, yeah. any of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is one thing I think we have done, and and uh, and our team knows, and I think even our clients know. If we say fail, or if we had an event, an unfortunate event that's yeah. occurred, or stepping over, or even someone where I was like just too direct with someone about, or I jumped to conclusions mm-hmm. about what was or wasn't that vulnerability that says, "Hey, I'm willing to go to that person, acknowledge that, and 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 in some ways, like lay myself bare." very vulnerably to say, Hey, I don't have it all together, but yeah. like I overstepped my bounds in this. I apologize for that. So I think that, or and that's part of sort of some servant leadership we try to involve in our company. The question at times, I think for, for, you know, honest people at some point say with your own self, you say, does that ever, does that make people think less of me because they're like, they're less secure in my leadership. And then there's another part of me and a little part of mine that says, no, I respect you more for that. Um, I think it's going to be a mixed bag. Yeah. I think there's going to be people that when you admit failure, they're going to go, yeah, that guy is a failure. Mm -hmm. And there'll be other people that say, I really respect that. You, you can't, you can't do your job the way someone else could do it. You can only do your job the way you can do it. Yeah. And, uh, and that doesn't mean you're necessarily as good as somebody else. You might be worse at it. That's good to know. Yeah. Right. But that's totally okay. Not everybody is going to be perfect at, no one's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had I had that I went through that with doing the creative director job where I didn't know how to do it, and I had people constantly giving me advice on how to do it. All the, you know, people mm-hmm. that worked for me with me, and I tried to take I tried to take every bit of it. I mm-hmm. did this style of creative director. I tried to be this kind of creative director, the caring, feeling creative director, the nurturing. Yeah, all the different out, personas. Yeah, yeah, and I turned out to be just like the brutally honest creative director. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I was okay with that, that, that it really started to work. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause that's just, I couldn't do the other one. Well, did you find that, that any of that try like trial and error with different personas? Did, did that contribute at all to, to burnout for you or trying totally. to be someone that you weren't? Totally. I actually at the time did interviews at other agencies hmm. when I was going through that. Yeah. Just because you're like, I, I haven't found my, my voice here. Or was it just the like the potential lack of confidence that comes from I think trying it's, to... I think it's the control that's come up a couple of times, right? Yeah. I was I didn't know how to do the job in a way that was effective. And so it wasn't effective. And I hadn't really found my voice in it. And, and mm-hmm. so I felt like I couldn't... I had a vision for what I wanted to see and the kind of work that I hoped to do. And I couldn't achieve it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Boy. And, and that that sounds familiar as far as the internal things that scratch you at times saying, can't achieve the thing you want to, mm-hmm. almost there. Am I qualified enough? Can we do this? Mm-hmm. Who else do we need? What, how do I need to augment that? My guess is that there's a lot of creative people who have the same feelings um, and that many of us hide behind, you know, ego, talents, whatever, you know, um, or at, at moments we just hide, you know? Yeah. Well, they're tough conversations. That mm-hmm. was the, I don't, you know, when I would look at some work and you wouldn't like it, mm-hmm. and then you'd explain why you didn't like it, yeah. and then you get into the debate back and forth, that always was a place where feelings got hurt. Mm-hmm. And eventually I learned how to like some stuff and not like mm-hmm. other stuff, but never get into the debate. It took yeah. a long time. That sounds masterful. I mean, it took a long time. But once I, once I was able to avoid the debate, it was just, it was more of a red light, green light sort of approach yeah. and there was no it, you you didn't generate hard feelings mm-hmm. through the process that's yeah. the problem with our process it can lit- it can generate yeah. long standing hard feelings mm-hmm. for each other yeah. because i've explained it's really just because i've explained to you why i don't like your work yeah you know yeah and interesting you say that too because we're 
you realize, or I don't know if you feel the same way, but as, as identifying yourself as a creative, the product we produce is, um, as much as I think we try to object, you know, make it something that's objective, it comes out of us. I think we all want to like, want to make the album that everybody loves and just listens to. And they don't have feedback. They just say, I'm a, a fan. And yet at the same time, you know, I have heard you say this before that our clients have clients and mm-hmm. there's always this, in, you know, this, this uncertainty. We're stewarding somebody else's thing. We're a guest in their house trying to, we've got some expertise, but we're coming in to help someone. Um, and, and so, you know, that too, there's, I mean, for everyone, I feel there's a little ego wrapped up in that. Ego is a, a tough word, but I mean, pride even to say in, in mm-hmm. what you create because it's so, it's, it's cool, it's unique and trying to not be wounded in the process of receiving. Yeah, you hurt feedback. feelings. Yeah. The, I was just thinking if, if you, if you, if you're debating with your spouse about where to go on vacation and you start to, you know, explain why you hate all their ideas it's gonna make hurt feelings you will yeah <laughs> but if you if you can figure out a way to just focus on the stuff that you're both liking mm-hmm. it goes really well yeah and usually that's the case with creativity too there's things there's common ground that you can find and and you can refuse to have a conversation about where you don't have co- common ground probably not mm-hmm. in a relationship nope. but yep. but in at work yeah welcome to the wood chain.